Shopify store owners, are your performance max campaigns currently failing? In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact strategies I use to help my e-commerce clients get results like these. All right, how to set up Formex Max campaign even if you're not a Google Ads expert. Okay, so my goals for this video essentially, if you have never set up a Performance Max campaign before, this will be a good starting place so you can get the proper structure so you can scale properly without having to re-optimize. If you have a Performance Max campaign but it's not hitting goals, this will help you restructure your current account. And if you have a good campaign but you want to squeeze out that extra 10% to make it great, this is the perfect video for you. So some results I've gotten using the strategy are here where I've gotten clients uh, thousands and thousands of conversions and sales um, on 50,000 50, plus on ad spend. So I've been taste, testing this for a long time. Um, so overview of this video, I'm going to give you the high level strategy overview so you can get an idea of what it's about. Um, the different performance max campaign types and strategies, um, what audience signals are, the listing groups, etc. The settings that you want to have in your performance max campaigns and how to scale and optimize your current campaign. So let's take it away. So this is strategy number one. This is what most people do. So they have a single performance max campaign that might have convert, uh, maximized conversion value here in a single asset group. Um, the cons, the pros of this is essentially um, it's easy to set up. Um, and there's very low effort, but your products in your Shopify store aren't all the same. They don't all have the same margins, the same audiences, and the same themes. So it's going to be hard to optimize. The asset groups um, are not uh, signaling to the most specific audience. So it's going to be more expensive for Google to find out who your target audience is. And you can't really uh, specify um, target return on ad spend specific to the margins of the products that you have. And this is what most people do and like just testing and setting up. And it's a rookie mistake for a performance max um, when you're first running it. And it's really hard to optimize the scale because you essentially just have to break apart the campaign, put it back into our learning phase. And that takes weeks and weeks to scale and optimize. Uh, strategy number two. So this is when you have campaigns specific to a certain product category. So for example, football equipment would be here. So you'd have a campaign for this and a single asset group um, for that um, signal. And this is still a simple setup. And they, you're usually diversifying based off of like a product category if you sell different brands. Um, there's one asset group per campaign. So you have an idea of like what's working, what's not. Um, however, the goals are not unique really to um, the different products and services that you can have within. It's just based off of categories which there's many different types of products within categories as well. Um, also, you're, you're diluting your account data by having so many different performance max campaigns. You really want to have like a handful with a bunch of asset groups because you can have at least 100 rather than uh, essentially doing one for each every single category. And now into the best strategy here, strategy number three. Um, you have your performance max campaigns based off of your business margins and what's actually valuable to you. So you can see for this example, there's high stock products with high margin. So you'd break out products, not based, not necessarily if they're the same, but if they have similar business value. So if, in this example, football gloves and baseball cleats might be different um, sports, but they have the similar margin. So they go together and there's an asset group specific to football gloves. Or if you want to add additional ones, you can add up to a hundred in these categories. So this uh, aligns your business goals much more with the actual performance max campaign. You can also see there's like a seasonal type of campaign here. So if you want to run a performance max quickly for like a few weeks, you can do that as well. Give a certain budget to a seasonal type of campaign with promotions. You can add those products in here. Um, this can be a little more difficult but because you, you have to make sure it's always, the products are always aligned with your business needs. Everything's in stock, but this is going to give you the best results and give, um, give you the most profits overall. All right, now into campaign and asset group types. So what exactly is an asset group to really define it? Um, the asset groups, think of like responsive search ads and responsive display ads. You're giving Google a bunch of different assets and creatives centered around a theme that you're essentially going to be giving an audience signal to. Um, and the creatives, the creatives of your um, actual asset group are going to be used all, all across Google's different inventory types. You want to make sure they're apl applicable and they all work together with the copy that you give it. That's very, very important. 
Um, so typically, to, to dive a little deeper, depending on the campaign strategy that you use, whether it's one, two, or three, you want to make sure that you have um, a few core asset, um, asset groups. So one is going to have all your products and then all the different um, signals that you're going to want to be giving it. And I'll talk more about audience signals in a little bit. But essentially, you're going to have one asset group with all your products, one with all your products in a single signal, and then one with um, one product category or brand, and then all signals. So you want to test um, at least these three core types and then test signals um, for each category against this. So it could be like brand number two, all purchasers, brand number three, all purchasers. And then you have a different signal. It could be um, past, it could be people interested in football. And you just test um, each signal to each uh, category to see what stands out um, based off of your structure. So for example here, say you have six different product categories, if that's like football, baseball, and basketball, and a few different other sports. And then you have signals of people interested in um, summer sports or, or people similar to past converters. You would test each signal to each um, product category that you have. So this would essentially equal 36 asset groups. And the reason you wanna do this is because you wanna test and see what's actually gonna hit on the product categories that you're testing. Because you'll be able to re review the data within a few weeks and kind of see what you should optimize and um, where you wanna scale your campaigns or where you wanna pull back. And you can start with five to 10 depending on your budget. Um, but it all depends on your industry, how much budget you have to play with and how many product categories you actually have in your account. I usually like to start with your um, first party data, whether that's email list, all converters data and whatnot, um, but it all depends on how new your account is. Um, so this is a more of like a naming convention structure you can kind of see. So if you have all products and all signals, it would be you have image and video assets, all products and then all signals. If you have all products and all purchasers, it would obviously be the signal, all purchasers and then all products. And then finally, if you're testing the brand category with all purchasers, this would be like more of a standard asset group. And this would be more, you make multiples of these depending on your categories. Okay, now onto audience signals, like a deep dive. So what is an audience signal? So the audience signal is basically telling performance max um, and cutting the learning phrase of like, okay, who, who do you actually know is your customer? And we'll test that first, but it's not going to be hard and fast, strictly only targeting the people that you give it, but it's going to give it a good idea of like who to go for first so it can speed up the um, learning curve. And basically it's going to give it stronger intent to find more sales across search display and video. Yeah, so that's essentially what it does to really scale your account. Um, you wanna test very distinct audience signals as well. So if you have all converters signal, then you like you can do a competitor's one. And I'll go more in depth on like the different types of signals that you can test, um, but you wanna make them very different so you can uh, segment your data. So this is the first type of um, signal um, information you can give, so your data. So this is basically your email list or your first party data. So if you have a reactivation list of, of uh, consumers that haven't bought in the last 60 days and they need a refill on your product, you can have that. The most or highest profitable customers, you wanna tell Google to get more people like this. Anyone that's ever bought, um, just your general email list. And you wanna make sure there's at least 1200 plus people or else um, Typically, the match rate isn't always 100%, but you need at least 1,000 people. I like to say to have at least 1,200 before adding it. You can use um, your first-party data, like all website visitors. Make sure that it's Google Ads users so you have more control and you filter out the bouncers so that it's not getting like bad quality traffic. Uh, people that have in carts, you can have remarketing type of asset groups. Um, people that have, per have just purchased and category page visitors and product page visitors. So these are different um, things you can test in, uh, in actual um, audience signals and asset groups for different product categories and brands. Okay, now into custom segments. So custom segments um, are essentially signals that you're giving Google based on what people have searched in the past or websites they visited or apps they visited. So it's almost like a custom interest or affinity. So you can type in your competitors, keywords, 
websites and people that have visited um, sites similar to theirs to kind of get you um, more targeted users. The best keywords that have converted in your account, you can put those as signals. Um, if you have a supplier, you can put in their website, so people that have visited there. Um, and then you can do lookalike audiences as well with custom segments. And also your brand keywords as well if you want to find more people similar to your current brand searchers. Now into interest and detailed demographics. So you can layer this on to winning asset groups. I wouldn't start off with this necessarily because it's the most broad and you really want to use your first party data and custom segments first. Those tend to work the best. Um, and don't add this unless you're having trouble spending your budget. And this will be the least targeted signal. Um, when, when testing in market segments, go for obvious and non-obvious signals. So for example, if you sell, if you sell like, um, camping lights, you should target people interested in camping, but you can also target people that are RV owners because people that own RVs typically go camping. So you want to just test, um, these different signals when you're trying to scale up and see what works the best for you and what helps, um, Google find the most cheapest customers for you. Okay. Now into listing groups. So listing groups basically just hold all your products similar to product groups in the old shopping ads. Um, but there's a few ways to segment your categories and or products. So you can do it by brands you're selling or your brand, um, product types, your best sellers, um, your low sellers that you want to move. If you're having a sale or seasonal, um, and different listing groups should obviously have different uh, messaging, creative, and everything. So you want to make sure you're really thinking about the types of creative and video that you do have when creating these different um, asset groups um, because the listing groups are probably the most important because you can add and create asset groups without um, creative. So you want to really think about what products you have in there. All right, now into the actual assets. So assets that you're going to be giving are similar to res uh, responsive display ads, but you're going to need images, videos, headlines. You want to make sure um, when you're creating an asset group, you almost want to think of the angle that you want to be talking to based on that specific audience signal. So for example, if it's a remarketing signal, you want to talk about like discounts or why they should buy now because they're already more familiar with your brand, whether they've added to cart, visited your site. So you don't need to speak top of funnel or like super high level as much. Um, you can also test sending traffic to your, the final URL expansion, which I recommend, or or non-final URL expansion, which is just sending them to a specific page, which will limit your spend and probably your performance because it limits the machine learning. All right, so the, for the actual copy uh, for your performance max campaigns, uh, Google recommends you have these few different styles. So like availability online. Um, so shipping and returns that they can do the benefits of the actual product. I'll call the action to buy the product pricing and fees of the product. Um, pr any promos that you have running and you can be lo location specific, whether it's like USA promotion, or if you sell only to a certain state, that segment of products, you can kind of do it like that. And then you can see the other, um, specified characters of all these different um, assets. Okay, now into images. I would test text and no text images as well. When you're really trying to optimize and scale and remove low performing images and, and add more high performers, test very different images. So do lifestyle images, do product, product only images, do images with different demographics that you're testing as well. And now into videos, make sure the videos match up with like the audience signal and images as well and the products, because you don't want to just put any videos in there um, or it will just like not make any sense with the actual products. You can test voiceover videos, which is like a slideshow, which is cheaper to make. And that's actually something that you can make into Google, which I'll make a video on, but test voiceover videos versus live action where you have like actors and it gets more expensive. Um, and just so you're aware, like video attribution isn't great on performance max because maybe it's mainly a click network in the power of video is a lot of YouTube conversions. So don't necessarily kill off videos. If you see an asset group, it's not performing as well, because that could be the top of the funnel on builder. 
if you're hitting your overall campaign goals. So don't just kill off videos if you don't see performance as much. Also, if you don't have any videos at all, I would opt out of the video network and contact your Google, your Google account rep. It can be a headache to do, but it's definitely worth it because the videos that Google makes are not very good at all. All right, now onto settings. So this is very important. So you're structuring your Performance Max campaign to the T, because even if you set up everything else right to this point, if your settings are off, it's going to kill the rest of your account. So in the settings, you have objectives and goals. So in terms of customer acquisition, you can bid for new customers only. Uh, you can bid higher for new customers um, than existing, or you can only bid for new customers um, as a setting. I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, in like a winning campaign because it's difficult for Google to know who's new versus returning because of data privacy. So you should just allow it to optimize. Um, unless you have like a bunch of data, I guess you can you can test a whole new campaign for this. Um, but typically using like audience exclusion lists are better anyways. Value rules, you can add this. So you can basically give more value to people um, in your backend data that Google doesn't know. Uh, that are more valuable valuable to you. For example, people that buy one time, but then they never email customer service. They could be like the quality audience or the people that you survey after they buy, they like the color purple. You can add more value because this is like offline data that Google doesn't know. You never want to do it with like stuff Google already knows, like the device they're on or the location or how much they bought because Google already knows that. You usually want to do it for like offline data. And you also want to make sure your dynamic uh, merchant center feed is linked, obviously. All right, now into budget and bidding. So you want to have at least $100 today as like a benchmark. But this all depends on the industry and how many products you have, because it's going to affect how many asset groups you make following um, strategy number three. So it's all relative, but I would say at least $100 a day so that you can get enough data to get 100 clicks to be able to make op an optimization within a few weeks. Um, because essentially, if you don't have that, um, it's going to be tough for you to essentially uh, scale up. Um, in terms of bidding, you want to make sure you start with maximized conversion value as an e-commerce business. And don't set a target until like six weeks after the campaign's running. Because you want to allow Google to optimize and test because it will limit your spend. If you have no data, you're not scaling yet. All right, now into location. So another update is you can pick people that are in your targeted locations. Um, I would definitely recommend this because it will stop a lot of like spam traffic from my click farms or people that are just interested in like the United States or wherever you're targeting and not actually there to buy. In terms of languages, I would I would target the language of your target country and the ad copy that you have, especially if your country speaks multiple languages because performance facts is gonna be showing up literally everywhere on the internet. So you wanna make sure you're only, people that see your ads, their browsers at least in your target language. All right, now onto scaling, everyone's favorite. So for scaling, you obviously wanna increase the budget to winning campaigns. You wanna wait two weeks um, af after increasing budget 20% before making any changes. Because the biggest thing with Performance Max, you need to allow it to learn. That's why when you're creating your campaign, you create so many asset groups so you can um, basically monitor their campaigns and not have to make so many tweaks every day. Um, like I said, six weeks before make, setting a TROAS goal. And don't turn off asset groups if you're hitting your goals. Um, this could be your, like your top of the funnel builder. You can also look at your CPCs to see what networks you're on. Um, so if you have a lower CPC, you're in the Google network, Google display network or discovery, you can add additional campaigns to kind of try to influence different networks that you want to push. Um, you want to be adding high performing assets. So if you have a low performing asset in the actual asset report um, and you want to test uh, winning combinations of audience signals together to essentially scale up even more, um, look at the themes of those new asset groups and test um, new ones on top of that. Also check your Google Analytics audience data to review and um, improve the actual um, converters. So you can test that as well. And check the audience insights tab as well. So just to further 
dive on budgets. You can see if it's less than 50% increase, you can wait two weeks. If it's greater than 50%, wait like a month. Just so you're not um, putting performance tax in a learning phase where it's just going to take too long to optimize and you're just going to hurt your performance. Um, and also, like I said, check the insights tabs to look at your listing groups and look at the click-through rate, conversion rate, um, app, the, the CPCs, and just monitor all these things to see what changes you should make in order to basically scale your campaigns or pause bad performing asset groups in a campaign that's not performing. All right, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions.